Now, hey, hey, everybody, I'm so excited. Um, we are in the first week of May, and the team is already freaking crushing it. I wanna mention that we had our highest volume ever this week. We had our highest success club ever last month, and this team is incredible. I'm just like goosebumps thinking about this team. Okay, let's jump into it. I've got tons and tons of like amazing announcement type stuff today, but I also have um, some great content. Um, today's like the topic for later is supposed to be about how to recruit. The, mm -hmm. the original plan was how to recruit um, business builders. I kind of went a different direction because we've talked about recruiting business builders. I don't want it to be a re like broken record and there's a ton of training out there about recruiting business builders in terms of like how to post and how to talk. Uh, about we don't for nurse visits. Oh, so okay. no. I'm yeah. constantly sharing about the coaching opportunity. Obviously we want to talk about our paychecks. We want to talk about what coaching has done for us, um, how we get freedom, how we get to be there. Like um, Linda posted this morning an awesome post about being able to be at her son's baseball game. Like those are the things we want to talk about. Um, but when we get those people and they're like, oh, I'm interested. Can you tell me about coaching? We're like, uh, what do we say now? <laughs> so that's what we're going to talk about today is what do we say when we actually have a call or a, we're setting something up? We're going to talk about that. Okay. So I'm going to share my screen. You good? You see it? Okay. Last month, our goal was 65 coaches, and we recruited more than 70 coaches last month. So we have a goal as a team to recruit 80 coaches this month. In the first three days, we already have 10. So I think we can totally crush this out of the, out of the park. Um, top team builders this month were, so far are Taylee and Ellie. So congratulations, guys. You guys are leading this crew with getting growing your teams. Uh, shout out to Ellie. She signed up what Sunday I think and she's officially a Emerald coach today so congratulations on Emerald I want to point out my girl she's been coaching for like six weeks mm -hmm. and she is officially in a diamond coach as of this morning so congratulations to Ashley you are amazing I knew you always would be so I'm glad you finally jumped on this look how cute he is guys look how cute. <laughs> Paul is officially a one-star diamond qualifying coach as of this morning. Linda is back to diamond, so Paul is officially one-star diamond qualifying. That What qualifying means, if you don't understand, you don't get official title of one-star diamond until you hold qualification for six weeks. So they're in qualification, so Linda, pressure is on, baby. I also want to point out Caitlin Schuler is one star diamond qualifying as of this week. Guys, like, ah, I am freaking out right now. This is insane. You guys are our first star diamonds within the entire organization. Um, I'm so excited for this because, well, partially that means 25 elite points per person per star as we, as you guys continue to grow for our team, which is going to just completely bump us up in rank. Um, and I don't know. I'm just, I'm super, super excited about this. So yay, yay, yay. Um, I do want to shout out, um, I didn't include this in the presentation, but I would like to shout out Jen Schaefer is back. We had a conversation yesterday. She is back to coaching. We're going to start at the beginning, but she is back and I'm so excited to have her. It's all about timing guys and we need to respect each other's timing. And I think that this is going to be amazing. She's coming to summit. So there's that. Um, success starters. Uh, Amanda locked in her success starter last month. I think I already mentioned that. And Tiffany locked hers in last month. We've got a few people that are going to lock it in this month. Holly, um, Ashley, Karen are all in month three. So this month when they hit success club, they're all going to get their tickets for summit for next year. Um, Amanda and Tasha are in for month two. And then any new coaches, you hit success club this first month and your face is going to be up here. So excited for you guys. We've already got people on the PV board. What the heck? Yes. Um, we've got a lot of people moving up in the PV board already. Um, we're only on April, May 3rd, guys. This is three days. I'm so, so, so proud of you guys. Um, so let's continue to keep moving up this board. Check out the success club board from last month, guys. I want to point out that Amber was in her, Amber and Tasha, I think, were both in their first month of coaching. First month of coaching and they had success club 10. We had a ton of other people on the board. Um, Caitlin Schuler may have hit Success Club 10, and I may have made a mistake. I think she hit Success Club 10, and I made a mistake. Um, I mean, we've got Dave Perry's face on the board. Like, we have got the faces on the board. I'm so, so, so incredibly proud of this team. Um, 
And I want to point out that we, we changed 252 lives, or sorry, we had 252 points, changed 126 lives last month. That is insane. And we were half of the Upgrade Alliance points, just saying. So there's that. And then from our new coach training, our new coach training for April is over. I want to congratulate Allie, Amber, Al Ellie, Kara, and Tasha for all getting prizes last month. Also want to give shout outs to Amber, Kara, and Tasha for um, rank advancing to Emerald last month. So um, congratulations, guys. This training works if you do it. If you show up, you do the trainings, you commit to the trainings. I mean, there were other people that even had success club points, but they didn't do all the training, so you don't get the prizes. These are just people who earn prizes. So I wanna point out, like, if you do this training and you commit to it, like, it works and you will be successful. So I'm super proud of you guys. If you finish this training, I do recommend reading the 12 week, 12 week year by Brian Warren. I know that um, if you're talking to me for your one months, I've mentioned that. Um, great personal development book for this, this point in your businesses. Some things coming up. The team has joined together. We're doing some amazing things. Um, we have Girl Wash Your Face is a book by Rachel Hollis. Um, we're starting a book club. This, but we, we kind of started it this month with the leadership group, but we're gonna continue it next month. This is for the strugglers. This is for the people, and I don't mean you, you could be hitting Success Club 40 in your business and your marriage is crumbling. If you could be, having a rock star marriage and your business is crumbling. It could be anywhere in the middle. You could be struggling with mom life or school or whatever. Um, if you are struggling in some area of your life, this book is going to help you. I promise. Um, I'm, we're, we, not just me, Holly and I are running this group together. We're gonna start it on Wednesday. I haven't told her that we were gonna start it Monday, but I feel like we need some more time. We're gonna start it on Wednesday. Um, that way everybody has time to order their books and stuff. But um, applications are, being accepted through tomorrow. So the link to apply is in our team page, the Team Transform Me Coach community page, if you'd like to apply to be in this group. Um, I think this is gonna be really fun. We're accepting 10 people into this group. We're gonna do similar things month over month, but this is what we're doing this month. This is gonna be fun. Every year we do a Facebook Live challenge. Um, we've done it like once a year. Every single time, something amazing happens. Taylor, wanna tell your story real quick about your live challenge? Sure. Um, I had never gone live in my entire life and I was literally at, well, first, the first time I ever went live, I was at Success Club Zero and our whole entire team had, had had to go live and talk about why they were coach throughout the whole month. Well, I waited until the very last day when I was at Success Club Zero and just from me going live, telling people like why I'm a coach, why I started to do this, went from zero to six in one day on the last day of the month, which was absolutely freaking insane. It was incredible. So I remember watching her live and just crying with her. She was, she was emotional. She was raw. She was real. And she was sitting outside in her beautiful backyard in Colorado. And she, sorry, I'm going to mute people. Um, and she was sitting outside, so it was like scroll stopping as she was going through, um, like as people were going through the newsfeed, she's got this beautiful mountain scenery behind her. It was scroll stopping, and then what she had to say was real, and it wasn't just rambling. She was actually just telling her heart, and it was like something you just get drawn into. So this live challenge is going to be amazing. I would like as many people to participate as possible. Um, it's going to start May 14th, so you have another week to think if you're going to join it. I highly, highly recommend it, guys. Um, She's going to give us topics, so it's not like you have to like think of what you're going to talk about. She'll give us topics, um, and there's going to be prizes and tips along the way, and who doesn't love prizes? Gifts are my love language. I can send you my mailing address if you need it. Um, the Success Club trip. If you haven't gotten on the wait list, anchorsaway2019.com, make sure you get on the wait list for that. Every single person, make sure you get on the wait list for the Success Club trip. You will not have a chance of even going if you're not on the list. Anchorsaway2019.com. Summit! Summit! If you're not going, go. Go, 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 go. Summit is June 20th to the 25th is when we have the house. It's actually the 21st to the 24th, I think. It's actually Thursday through Saturday, but we're, we have the house from Wednesday to Sunday. So if you guys want to go, go. Go, go, go. People are selling their tickets for $145. The people that bought them last year and can't go. There's a lot of tickets on sale for $145 still. So if you want to go, get in touch with me. I'll help you get a cheaper ticket. Um, and then the house costs $150 for the whole week, weekend, whatever you want to call it. Um, I'm going to stock it with food. I'm going to like 
we're, we're going to have so much fun. If you can go, please go. Um, this is about 20,000 coaches went last year and we do super workouts with the super trainers. We get one-on-one -on -one support through our team. We get a team photo shoot. We have, um, the super workout where we work out with every single super trainer in the streets all together. There's 20,000 of us working out at the same time. It's super, super emotional and incredible. And you learn so much from all these top coaches that give you their experience, their tips, their secret sauces. You learn everything. Um, and it's just fun. A lot of fun. And there's parties. So you should go. <laughs> if you guys, um, just a reminder, team launch challenge for the snack bars. If you guys need to take a quick screenshot, Five, four, three, two, one. Okay. Um, uh, send me your screenshot of your completed checklist by May 11th, and you'll be entered into win, win a team shirt. To Be Mindset launched yesterday. So if you guys are not sure what that is, message me or your coach, and we'll get you up to speed. We talked about it last week's team call. Um, Ashley Lemons and I are going to co-lead a group on – May 14th, it's going to start um, for To Be Mindset. So I'm really excited about that. Thank you, Ashley, for stepping up to the plate and doing that. I know she's really excited about this program. She's talked about it live. Um, I think this is going to be the solution for a lot of people who hate the containers. I think it's going to work. So, um, and it's also going to work for the people who hate to work out or make excuses to work out. This is going to be their solution. Um, I already watched a little bit of the first video. I bought it last night and it's, oh my gosh, I love Alana. I love her. And if you get your people to sign up as a coach, they get to be in the coach test group, which is a lot like the 80 day obsession test group where they'll have access to ask Alana questions. So definitely a good idea to lead with the discount there. Taylor Perry, I want to kind of mention that she is going to take over our new coach mentorship. Um, we're, I'm trying to divvy things out so that I have some more time to dive in with the leaders and continue to build our team. So Taylor has graciously um, volunteered to take over the new coach mentorship. So as of Monday, she's going to start posting the um, coach trainings and stuff. You still have, you, I'll still be in there. You can still ask me questions. Tag me if you have a question specifically for me. Taylor will likely be able to answer the questions. She's a diamond coach. This month she's going to be, I, I called it early, but this month she's going to be a success club all-star, which means she's had success club for an entire year. She's a success club trip earner and she's a business starter. So I really, really think that you guys are going to get a ton of value from her. Her new title is new coach mentor. And I'm really, really excited for this. So um, I just wanted to make sure everyone knew about that and is going to know about this transition before we, before we do it. <laughs> Alrighty. Any questions on, I'm going to stop sharing for one second. Any questions on anything I just mentioned? That was a lot. No, you got it? Okay. Then we're going to jump into my content for today. So this is where um, I'm just gonna share a little bit about coaching. Okay. Can you, if I pull up my notes, can you guys see my notes? Can you see my notes? No? You just see my presentation? Yeah. Okay. Good. Okie doke. So why do so many of us feel uncomfortable approaching people about the coaching opportunity? Like so I've heard from so many coaches that they don't feel comfortable doing it. We believe in our programs. We believe in our products. We believe in ourselves. We know our business like businesses can literally change lives. So why are we hesitating? Why are we not shouting this from the rooftops and inviting every single person we know, especially the people closest to us, our bridesmaids, our sisters, our best friends are like, why are we not inviting these people to join us? So my guess is it's probably because we've learned some really icky way of inviting. <laughs> we found some really unnatural feeling way of inviting by business opportunity when really it should be natural. It should be um, something that we want to talk about all the time. So it doesn't have to feel weird. Like don't make it weird. We can invite people in a way that makes this process so much easier and effective that when you're comfortable share, when you're comfortable and confident talking about the business, you tend to initiate the, these conversa conversations more and more frequently. Um, okay, I think I'm fine. Let's see. Um, okay, sorry, I'm just muting everybody. Um, okay. So 
here's a five-step process we, that we can use to engage people in meaningful conversations so that we're not just like spewing out different scripts and weird things so we can actually have real conversations with people, get them to trust us and be willing to actually talk about this and have it like give us a chance at even seeing if this works for them. So the best part is you don't have to leave your integrity at the door when you're talking to these people. You don't have to like feel like a dirty car salesperson. So number one thing I want everyone to do in this elegantly recruit new business builders process is I want everyone to serve, don't sell. We are not out there to sell anything. We are not out there to sell Beachbody. We are not out there to sell products or programs or Shakeology. We are not out there to sell. We are out there to serve. We all know that what we, what we do as our workouts, what we do as coaches, what we do, our drinks, they are to help us. They are not to, they're not, I don't know. It's not like a lipstick. The lipstick is, it's health and fitness that's actually changing our lives. So recruiting with integrity is about service, not selling. You're not out to convince people to be a coach. You're rather out to introduce them to coaching with the intention of helping them make some positive changes in their lives. Your goal is to help them make positive changes in their lives. So before approaching anyone about coaching, decide to come from a place of curiosity and not attachment, which means check your agenda at the door. You are not, when you start a conversation, your goal is not to sell them. Your goal is to have a conversation. Your goal is not to sell them or convince them or anything. You are putting their needs and desires first. And I'll tell you how to do that. Your prospects are going to pick up on your sincerity. If you do this, they're going to pick up on your sincerity. Do this with your, your um, challengers too. Like talk to them about, ask them questions. Um, be open to, they're going to be more open to your questions and suggestions if you are leading with their interests first, okay? So the way we're going to do that. We're going to listen more and talk less. Many, many women, sorry guys, but blame it on our, our enthusiasm. We talk too much when we start sharing about the business or sharing about Beachbody in general. I 100% know that I do that. I talk with like my best friend and I'm like, I just, I don't think I stopped talking for like 15 minutes and she was looking at me like a deer in headlights. She's like, uh, cool. Like it's not, I, cause I just tell her about me and I'm not asking questions. It's just like me, 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 me. And I think we've all been there. We can all get into that cause we're just so excited about this. So we can go into overwhelming detail about the compensation plan, the history of the company, um, the science behind our products. We can unintentionally hijack the conversation. We do. We, and we've done, I'm pretty sure every single one of us has done it. We have word vomited the conversations and we leave our poor prospects staring blankly at us with that deer in the headlights look. They're like, you just, you told me too much and now I'm really confused and overwhelmed and I don't know what to do. We do that with new coaches too. When you sign up as a coach and I'm like, all right, just do this, 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 this. And you're like, ah, this is too much. So our goal is when you're leading a conversation, spend the majority of your time listening. Ask questions to find out what's meaningful to your prospects. So ask about their job, ask about their income, ask about their family life, maybe ask about their kids if they have kids. What are their goals? I'm not saying just fitness goals. What are their goals in life? What do they want to do? Um, I talked with Amber yesterday and I asked her what her goals were. She wants to like declutter her house. That's an important goal that I should know as her coach because I can help her as her, like, this is not just about a business and just about fitness. This is about like us as people. And the more we genuinely care about each other's lives, the more we're gonna have a connection and community and sincerity and people are going to feel it. So um, aim to spend 80% of your time listening and 20% talking, 80%. So that means that if you're talking for 10 minutes, two minutes is about the business, the rest is about them. You need to be talking very little and just listening. And then, so by listening and asking questions, you're going to learn the key information and their, their main problems, their concerns, their dreams, how coaching could possibly help them in these areas. So when you're talking to these people, take notes. What are their struggle areas? Maybe they need to pay off credit card debt, or maybe they're looking to buy a house or their car broke down and they need a car. What are their struggle points? And then you can talk about, did you know like selling two challenge packs a month, you're going to earn $100 you could put away into savings. 
that might be huge for someone. That might be all they need. Or did you know by selling two challenge packs a month, you can pay for your own Shakeology so you can do this without your husband down your back? Like that way you can be working on your fitness without having like him worried about it financially or anything like that. You can pinpoint their struggle areas and then figure out what exactly they need to do with coaching to fix that. So without uncovering and connecting to, to their most important problems or desires, any information you share about coaching is, isn't going to carry much weight. So if you don't know what their struggles are, you're not going to be able to help them. If you don't know what they deeply care about, you're not going to be able to help them. So um, I don't have another example. Just kidding. I'm not going to try. <laughs> um, number three, have nothing to hide. Don't hide anything. Um, don't hide the fees. Don't hide anything because that never helps anything at all. Um, in the old days of network marketing, direct sales, many people were taught to trap prospects into a business presentation. So they'd be like, hey, want to come over for dinner? You bring the food, blah, blah, blah. And all of a sudden you're getting a presentation. All of a sudden you're giving them a presentation that they didn't know about. So um, like the dishes were cleared, the flip chart comes out, and all of a sudden people are like making circles on a page. That's not what we're trying to do here. Um, this like backdoor approach just doesn't work. So you may want to, you may get people to sit down and have a presentation or like a coffee date or something like that, or a phone call even, but they're not going to be interested in what you have to say if you like scheme them into it. Um, and they're often going to resent you for feeling like you put them on the spot. So don't put them on the spot. It's better to be direct and sincere. Let people know that you have this opportunity and that they might, uh, that it might be helpful to them in some way. Let them know why you think it would be helpful to them. Um, very specifically, be very, very specific when you're talking about coaching to someone. Um, so I don't, I don't know who's there with the baby. Who's somebody's there with the baby. If I, if I saw you, I don't, I don't know who it is, but, um, if I saw you on Facebook and I was like hearing your story, I'd probably be like, have you ever thought about coaching? I see you have this little baby. I'm sure you don't want to leave that little baby and go to work every day. Like have you ever considered working from, oh my God, no, you don't want to leave that little baby. Um, have you ever thought about like having the opportunity to work from home where you can be home with your baby and start saving for gymnastics classes or whatever it is you want to do? And it, you, you be specific with those people and let them actually visualize it and hear about it and maybe they'd be interested. Or maybe they'd be like, nah, peace out, I'm going to work. <laughs> like this baby's staying with the babysitter. Like that's fine too. It's not for everybody, but at least invite them. That's all we're doing is starting the conversations. So take the pressure off. As you're inviting people to meet with you, make it easy for them to say yes by removing any pressure. Remove all the pressure. Most prospects avoid these kind of meetings because they fear having to tell you no. They fear that like if you tell them no or like you're not gonna let them say no and you're gonna trap them or you're gonna like be really annoying or something like that. Um, and they're gonna be less pressured into joining a business that they'll feel pressured into joining a business that isn't for them. So take the pressure off, assure them you have their best interests at heart. You sincerely believe this opportunity can make a real difference in their lives and you want to um, share some details so they have a better understanding of how it works. Let them know you only want them to join the business because it's an absolute fit, but you've got to mean this guys. You guys cannot be out for the sale. You cannot, and I'm going to tell you, I've done it. I have signed people because I needed that success club number. I have signed people because I didn't, um, I had goals that I personally needed to meet. And guess what? It was hell. Those people are not set out to be coaches. And I spent so much time trying to make them coaches and it wasn't for them. If it's not for them, don't make it for them. Don't try and convince them to be a coach when it might just not be a good fit. So by being completely honest and upfront, people are going to trust you more. They're going to feel more comfortable answering your questions and you'll be more attractive to them as a coach, especially to your more professional prospects. So people who may already have a job or may have, uh, might be a personal trainer or has experience in health and fitness or was a network marketer of another sort. They're going to appreciate your direct and sincere communication. You not trying to like beat around the bush and be like, Oh, have you ever thought like if you are, more sincere and just real with them, it's going to come off that way. So the last point I want to make, be willing to not sponsor people. Like I just kind of said a minute ago. So you, you're going to ask questions. You're going to listen to them and you're going to do all you can do to connect the dots. So your prospect sees the bigger picture of what the opportunity is and how it can make a difference for them. 
and you finished your coffee, your prospect seems only mildly interested, now what? You're like, okay, like I, I thought this person was gonna be a rock star, they don't really seem interested, now what? You're far better off sponsoring a few people who are excited and interested in this than people who are not. You are. You're better off working with the willing than pulling people who aren't interested. Trust your gut and don't waste time and energy trying to recruit someone who's just not a fit. Um, they'll end up resenting you because you didn't make them successful. Um, they're going to, and you or they may end up avoiding phone calls or text messages, and that's frustrating on both ends. Um, and you're going to waste precious time and energy trying to make a square block fit into a circular hole. It just isn't going to work. So knowing when to let it go of a prospect and move on to someone who's a better fit will build your confidence because you know you're truly coming from, from a place of integrity when it comes to recruiting others. Um, there are plenty of people who want what you have. Be brave enough and picky enough to find them so everyone wins. And I mean that with the coaching and with, with the fitness side. Obviously, the, okay, I'm going to stop sharing for a second so I can see your faces. Um, obviously, the fitness side is for everybody. It's for everybody who wants it. Anybody could do the fitness side of this, but they have to want it. Coaching is a little different. It's not for everybody. You know what I mean? You have to have some communication skills. You have to have some people skills. You have to be friendly. You have to be like, you have to have some skills to be a coach, but the coach, the fitness side can be for anyone. But I'll tell you, it's equally as frustrating to sign up a challenger who you never hear from again. It's equally as frustrating to sign up a coach who says, I'm going to do this checklist that I spent all that time doing for you guys yesterday and never does it. It's equally as frustrating. So um, choose who you sign up. Be picky. Be selective. Think about this. Who do you want to be sitting on a cruise with next year on a very confined, tight quarter ship? Do you want to sign up a whole bunch of people? You're like, mm, not my tribe. Like, I do not want to sit on a boat with you. Or do you want to find 15 awesome friends that you can all squeeze into a house with, with two bathrooms at Summit, and um, share bathroom quarters while trying to get ready for a 7 o'clock a.m. learning session? <laughs> be, pre be prepared not to sleep, guys. But who do you want to spend your time with? When you're signing coaches up, think of that. I'm super selective on who I have on my team, and I would not wish – any single person on this team was not on this team. So, um, yeah, that's what I got for today. <laughs> that's the direction I took things. I'm going to open it up for questions, but this was a very short call. So I have plenty of time to ask, answer questions. It can be related to this, not related to this, about Summit, about anything. About my lashes. I'm just kidding. Feel free to unmute yourselves. Somebody start this combo. Now I'm putting everybody on the spot. So you usually reach out to like three people a day. Is that right for coaching? <clears throat> so the way that I have my checklist set up right now is 10. I have 10. I don't always fulfill that. I try to, but I try to reach out to 10 people about coaching and 10 people on Facebook and on Instagram. So 10 on each. Um, I do that because I usually post about coaching. Usually every day I have a post mm -hmm. something about coaching and that gives me the opportunity. That's an easy in to send messages mm -hmm. about coaching. I send people messages who liked or commented on my posts or watched my stories on Instagram. So that's the easiest way that I have found to start conversations about coaching that I can actually do that volume in a day. Um, there's other days where I'll do three and it's not related to a post. And that is me scrolling my newsfeed quickly because you can get lost in there. Um, but I scroll my newsfeed and I try to find three people who I'm like, dang, why aren't you coaching yet? Like you should be a coach yeah. or maybe I'll even check the challenge group and be like, you are a rock star. Why are you not coaching? Um, or your transformation okay. is amazing. You should pay this forward. Um, that's kind of how I find my people. Okay. Yeah. What should the greeting yeah. messages say? Is it on me? What should what say? Um, you said send out greeting messages to new Facebook friends. 
Yeah. So the greeting message is your like new people you first connect with, like that you've never talked to before. My greeting message usually says something like, Hey girl, I think we just became friends on Facebook and I wanted to say hi before I seem like a total creeper liking and commenting on your pics. How are you? Or like, I see you've got two babies. How old are they? Or whatever. I just, I do something to break the ice and be like, just wanted to say hi before you thought I was a creeper. And that's usually just enough to, or I might even finish it if I'm like trying to just like get to the meat and potatoes. I might be like, um, I'm sure you've noticed that I'm a health and fitness coach. Are you a health and fitness coach or are, are you on a fitness journey too? So, Hey, I just wanted to introduce myself before I start liking your posts. I want to make sure you didn't think I was a creeper. I'm sure you noticed I'm a fitness coach. Are you on a fitness journey too? Something along those lines. So can I add something to that, Stephanie? Yeah. So when I first started reaching out to people and doing, I mean, I, my script is very similar to what Stephanie just said. I would get a lot of times um, messages from people that were like, who are you? Like, how do I know you? And one of the best things that has been successful for me is either if they're a parent or, you know, if they're a mom, um, I usually say something along the lines of, oh, I just saw that you also had some kids. I have a daughter who's two and a half. um, And I really just am trying to expand my mommy friends because all of us moms need as much support as we can get. Um, And that's been really successful if they don't have kids you know, generally I'm trying to find people who are, I'm friends with and I'll say, oh yeah, we're friends with, or we're both friends with so-and-so and and me and her click really well. And we, the the same, um, the same taste in friends. And I'm really just trying to reach out, meet new people and just, um, you know, have a good time on Facebook. And again, like click to that really easily instead of just being like, oh, um, I just wanted to friend you. (laughs) Totally. I agree with both of those. I think those are both awesome points. But it's one of those, like when you first see it, you have like that panic attack of like, Oh God, what do I say? (laughs) Yeah. I usually do something very similar. I'm like, Oh, Hey, I saw you guys. I, this is a true story, buddy. So someone I saw an ad for these really cute shoes the other day and a whole bunch of people liked them. And for some reason it was very targeted towards Charleston. So like the people that liked it were all from Charleston. I don't know how, but, um, anyway, I friend requested a whole bunch of those people and this one girl messaged me and she's just like, Hey, do I know you? And I'm like, Oh no, I happen to see you actually like this ad. (laughs) I'm like, those shoes were super cute. So clearly you're my tribe. And literally within the same conversation, sold her a challenge pack. Like, she's like, what do you do as a coach? And I, she's like, can you tell me more? And I'm like, do you have a coach you work with? No, I'm hoping you'll be my coach. I'm like, is this happening right now? <laughs> like, <laughs> it was the craziest conversation I've ever had. But I mean, those things happen. So, yeah. Ah, it's like, yeah I have my question baby. before the baby takes over. Yeah. <laughs> um, what do you do after you've, like, gone cycled through all of your friends and – like Instagram and Facebook as far as like reaching out to them because you know I don't have a lot of I don't have a lot of friends on Facebook and Instagram right now so you just add random people or what I make sure that I add at least 10 new friends every single day um on and I follow as many people as I can on Instagram because it's not as many roles about that but um I follow as many people as I can and then I unfollow so that my like ratio is always like way more followers than the people I'm following but um could constantly be building your market, constantly be networking. Um, if you do a little bit of research on building your network, like expanding your network, do some YouTube video searches. It'll teach you, like there's tons of videos out there to learn how to expand your, your coaching network. So I would do some YouTube searches and kind of fall in a YouTube rabbit hole for a little while and just like learn how to do it. And that way you can expand your network always be expanding it. Cause, okay. So there's a chart. So I'll quick draw this. This is something I saw when I was a brand new coach. So we all know what a line chart looks like, right? So we've got, we've got our chart. So when you start as a coach, you have, this is your warm market. Your warm market is up here. You've got a big warm market. Like these are all the people that know and love you. And as you go, you're going to sign them up, sign them up, sign them up, sign them up. And all of a sudden you're going to have nobody. 
you're gonna end up with nobody because everybody you've talked to, okay? So this is your cold market. Your cold market, when you first sign up as a coach, you've got nobody. And as you build, you should be building consistently, growing that cold network, cold network, cold network, cold network, so that by the end, you've got unlimited people to talk to. On day one, so you've got your cold market dwindling, or I'm sorry, your warm market dwindling, your cold market growing, so midway, you should be growing back up. You shouldn't, you should always have somebody to talk to. But if you wait and you do it here, it's gonna suck. So don't let it suck. Always be on the up. Make sense? Oh, I, um, we kind of talked about it, I think in, uh, I don't even remember which group it was, but we talked that Instagram has changed. I have, um, we have researched and we haven't found out algorithms yet. As soon as I know more, I'll share. Facebook, okay. Instagram has one, Facebook and Instagram algorithms have 100% changed. Um, engagement's way down. So um, we've been researching, nothing's been published yet. I assume it'll be published in the next few days. Okay, cool. Yeah. We actually have Nicolette's husband on duty of finding, finding the rules. <laughs> The current algorithms. Perfect. Anybody else? I'm so glad that there's so many new faces on here. Well, names on here. I don't see your faces, but lots of new, new people on here. Anything? Nothing? We good? I love Linda said that she wasn't very popular in high school, so she's working on taking over the Facebook world. That's what she said. <laughs> um, Brooke on our team reminded me how much of a dork I was in school. We went to school together before she, we went to like middle school together before she moved and she sent me a picture yesterday and I don't know who let me out of the house wearing what I was wearing, but I was a total dork then. So not much has changed. <laughs> as long as you rock it, it doesn't matter. Oh, I don't know. I had this very like T length floral, not pretty dress and some big shoes. I don't know what those were. <laughs> and bangs and glasses. It's real cute. Nice. Yeah. All right. I think that's everything then, guys. We got done a little early. Spend the next 20 minutes working on your business. Do something productive. Um, make sure that if you want to join our, our book club, you apply for that. If you want to join Linda's group. Linda, did you post the group in the, in the team page yet? Yep, it's posted in the team page. So if you want to join the live group, the live challenge group, um, I encourage everyone to. Please, everyone join the live challenge group. Um, Jen, you were part of it last year, right? The live challenge? <clears throat> right before. Sorry. I think I just started coaching right. You guys were, had already started that. Oh, because right. you were totally doing it, though. You were going live. You went live. I to go live. Because I remember, like, when I did go live, oh, my gosh. Yeah, it helped big time. Yeah, did I you talk about how it's going to be working? Uh, vaguely. I said that you're going to give them posts and stuff, but we'll, we'll talk about that in the next call. Okay. Yeah. She'll give us topics to like talk on. So we're not like confused of everything. Um, yeah, I remember some of Jen's videos. <laughs> uh, you, you guys should go back and watch them. It's no, very fun no. to watch, watch people's <laughs> videos progress as they, as they go on. I remember watching one and she was like, she went from A to Z to F and I was like, what is going on? <laughs> and this is exactly what we did after her call. It was the best. And so many people were like watching. It was amazing. It was the best. So I really, really encourage everyone to start somewhere because when you start somewhere, you progress from there. We all know that our first workout, we look like a fool, especially if we're doing a dance workout, we look ridiculous, but then you do it again and you're like, okay, I got this. And by the end you're like, Hip hop, Sean T, right? <laughs> I don't do Sean T's programs. But all right, you guys have a good day. I'll talk to you all later. <laughs> Linda's like, you don't do Sean T? What? <laughs> um, all right, I'll talk to you guys later. Have a good day. It was so great seeing your faces. Bye.